Hi YouTube, this amazing little amphibian is called a midwife toad um, and I fell in love with these guys when I found some in France when I was a child, I was a young teenager. Um, you can tell this one is a male because he's got a, this is actually a string of eggs um, that are all wrapped around his back legs and they form this kind of little clump. Um, and this has got all the little tadpoles developing inside and what he'll do is when they're ready he'll dip this uh, into some shallow water and all of the tadpoles will hatch. And it's obviously quite unusual for a male amphibian to look after eggs like this. So I'd always dreamed of building an outdoor garden enclosure to keep these guys in and breed them. Um, so this is one that I've built and I'm going to show you how I did it and go through the stages with you. So I knew that I wanted it to fit in this space between these big railway sleepers that I've got in the garden. So I initially built this um, basic timber frame, um, but I didn't realise exactly how I wanted it really. I didn't plan it or anything, I just started building it. And I suddenly realised that this is quite tall. Um, so halfway through I kind of changed my mind after I got to this stage. I decided that it would be better if it was um, angling downwards uh, so that it would be easier for me to actually get into it if I needed to do any maintenance work. So I changed the shape of it to this. Um, this is much better because it means the front edge I can easily put my leg over and um, stand into it um, without any problems. I don't have to climb in, I just basically can step into it. Um, I then used um, a product called Sickens um, to coat all of the framework. This just uh, helps to weatherproof it. Um, and I'll need to do that every, um, I think it's every three or four years, uh, just to keep it um, nice and weatherproof. You can see how I used lots of um, stones and things to level it at the bottom when I was building it. Um, and any excess soil I took out and put in this uh, sort of grey plastic tray to one side. Um, yeah, I obviously used a spirit level on the top as well to make sure everything was dead straight. I then used a galvanised mesh to coat all of the inside um, to stop any little toads and toadlets getting out. Um, so the mesh, I think it's about four millimetres, maybe five millimetres wide. So it's, it's very, um, yeah, it's a very narrow mesh. Uh, but this is really good stuff because it doesn't rust or anything. And uh, it's lasted for quite a few years since I built this. So it is, yeah, it's working well. And the nice thing about this mesh is that it bends really easily uh, and you can just cut it with a sharp pair of scissors. And I also just use a staple gun with stainless steel staples, um, just literally to staple it to the frame. So it's actually really quick to get this mesh on. I did then repeat this process with a layer of white outdoor netting, which was even finer. Um, and again, this is just to prevent the little toadlets from escaping. Um, and this was even easier to cut with scissors and again just stapled on with stainless steel staples. I didn't get any photos of that stage but you'll see it later throughout the build. Right, this is the most important part of the whole project really, was to build something called a hibernaculum. So here I've just sunk a really large black tub down into the ground so it's, it goes right down below ground level. This is going to be a space to allow toads to hibernate uh, without freezing to death in the winter. So next I lined the box with polystyrene and I'd managed to find this special kind of polystyrene with lots of holes in that were just about the right sort of size for an adult midwife toad. So I stood a piece of that up in the hibernaculum like this. Um, you can see all the holes so toads can go in there in the winter. Um, polystyrene is a really good insulator so it'll keep them nice and warm underground um, during the winter months. Next I filled the remaining space with lots of broken roof tiles and um, this is for exactly the same reason it's just to provide lots of surface area so lots of toads can hide in here together um, without feeling too cramped they all just get into all the little crevices between all of the tiles it's good places for them to hide. Then I covered the whole lot with a couple of uh, extra roof tiles really big ones um, and this is just to stop rain from getting in and just saturating the whole thing. Um, there are obviously little gaps at the edges of all of this so that the toads can get in. Um, you can see those kind of uh, tubular parts of the roof tiles. Um, those make great little holes for the toads to get in there. Um, it's worth mentioning that the black tub also has draining holes at the bottom. So if water did somehow get in, 
uh, it would all drain off underneath as well. So you wouldn't end up drowning the toads in the winter either. Then on top of those tiles, I started adding soil uh, to form a small mound uh, and more uh, roof tiles. Um, further places for the toads to hide as well um, if they didn't want to go deeper. Then they can kind of choose their levels as well. Then more soil mounded on top of that. And then after that, um, lots of stones uh, with lots of kind of holes between them. Okay, I'll show you how I furnished the rest of the inside of the enclosure. So it's mainly lots of kind of rocks all stacked up to form like little rockeries along like the back edge and the side edge. Um, there are some bigger rocks in here as well, piled on top of each other. It's basically trying to form as many little spaces for them to hide as possible. Um, also, where the soil is there, that's where the hibernaculum is underneath. And it's like a sandy soil um, bank because that's how I found them in France. They were underneath like a, a sandy bank covered in flat stones and every flat stone you lifted up, there was like a little toad underneath in a tiny little burrow. So I wanted to recreate that in here. Um, you can also see all the roof tiles stacked up right at the back there on the back sort of edge. Um, and again, that's just to provide lots of spaces for them to hide. Um, the actual pond, I just literally just dug a hole um, put some pond liner in it and then just put sand around the banks and try to um, keep the, the sand nice and damp and those kind of little shallow um, inclines there that allows the male toads to pop down to the water edge and um, when the time is right put the eggs uh, into the water so you can't have sides that are too steep. And I really compacted down the um, soil and sand and stones around the bottom edge so that the toads couldn't um, dig down and bury out underneath the bottom of the enclosure. That was important too, because I really want to keep these toads in this enclosure and not allow them into the UK, um, loose into the UK, because they're not a native species. I know there are some um, colonies in the UK, like there's one in Bedford, for example, um, where the toads got out of a private collection sometime in the past and uh, they've basically colonised parts of um, Bedford. So I obviously don't want that happening um, where I live. So with that in mind, um, this is the lid that I built for it. So this is a really heavy lid, for one thing. Uh, it's got solid hinges uh, and you can see there it's got like a sort of a, a lock at the front um, to stop it from being opened easily. Uh, and then what I've done, obviously, I've lined this again with the galvanised mesh uh, and then the white uh, mesh in on the inside of that as well. Um, and what you can also see on this edge here, um, I've put like um, black uh, sort of rubberized material on the edge and I've... I've kind of looped it over and stapled it on really firmly. So what this does, it provides like a sort of a seal, like a rubber seal. So when you close the lid, um, there are literally no gaps where the toads can get underneath uh, and escape from. I don't think they would. I have occasionally seen little toads climbing up some of the um, netting on the inside, but usually they stay down in the rocks and on the sand and things around the pond. You can see when I'm doing maintenance in here, um, I can either put the lid back and rest it on my barbecue behind, um, or I can um, hold up a lid with a stick, like you can see the one that's half open there. Uh, this makes it really easy to get in and kind of uh, trim plants or you know add new plants or anything that I want to do. Yeah, with regards to plants, um, I just put lots of things in like um, heathers, um, little ferns, uh, mosses, uh, grasses that kind of thing but uh, mainly smaller kind of things uh, apart from the heather and the ferns incidentally if you ever want to grow ferns um, I could recommend building an enclosure like this because the small ferns that I put in that you see in in here they absolutely took off and they've got absolutely massive um, and you can keep trimming things back as you need to but um, yeah for growing ferns having this kind of white mesh it seemed to work really well. It keeps the main sun off them, um, but gives them enough kind of light to just go a bit mad. I did plant some liverworts as well around the edges of the pond, which seems to have done quite well. Um, you can see here the, um, the roof tiles that I was telling you about before in the little stack. And you can see how great that is for um, giving all the little toads space. Uh, they really love hiding in all those little crevices. 
So obviously at this stage with everything finished, I was ready to put my um, toadlets in. Um, so I'd actually bought a whole load of um, tadpoles off a guy. I think I bought about 70 if I remember correctly. Um, so here they are. Um, this is how I was rearing them, just in a, a shallow tray. Um, you can see the little dots in here are the fish food that they were feeding on. Um, and I got them all to metamorphose, I think bar one. Um, one that was a little bit wonky, he had funny eye or something. Uh, he didn't survive, but all of the others survived. So I ended up with all these little tiny toadlets. Um, and I've added all of these to the enclosure. And I think within a year or a year and a half, um, I was getting spawn on the back legs of males so really quickly much quicker than, than i thought i ended up actually breeding them in the enclosure and i heaven knows how many are in there now but on a warm evening you can hear them all they make a little peeping noise they kind of go peep 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 and they sort of throw their voice a little bit as well so sometimes you hear them and you can't tell where the noise is coming from I'm so glad that I did it because it just means on warm evenings I can have a look in there and watch what all the toads are doing uh, and you can hear them all the time and it makes a lovely sound to your garden and um, it's just obviously a much easier way of breeding midwife toads because they basically are just doing it by themselves and you see all the tadpoles in the pond all the time. Um, incidentally with this species the actual adult toads are quite small. Um, when they metamorphose into toadlets um, they're already probably about three quarters grown. They're quite big toadlets. And in fact, the tadpoles can get um, absolutely massive. Like some years they can hibernate in the pond and then carry on growing the year after. And then they get absolutely huge. And you just think, how can a toad that is such a small species of toad have a tadpole that is absolutely gigantic? Really kind of interesting species to keep. Food-wise, I introduced um, quite a lot of uh, wood lice. I collected loads of wood lice when I first set this up uh, and I put some piles of leaf litter in amongst these rocks and I just put all the wood lice in and they seem to um, still be in there so I think the toads are feeding off of those. Um, obviously worms come up from under the ground all the time so that sort of feeds them without me having to do anything um, but occasionally you know if I want to kind of uh, fatten them all up a bit as well uh, especially you know before they go into hibernation and that kind of thing or when they first come out of hibernation I just give them a whole load of um, crickets um, dusted with Nutribol just as a kind of a boost uh, to help them get going uh, when the breeding season comes. Anyway I hope to build another enclosure at some point similar to this one maybe a bit lower um, on the other side of my garden where I've got similar railway sleeper set up um, and I plan to maybe breed um, fire salamanders in there. Um, this project I will try and get some other videos at some point of actual you know toads in action midwife toads in my garden and put those up on YouTube that's sort of on my to-do list for some point um, so look out for those. It probably is worth mentioning that I've got a really big pond in my garden as well, um, which is for, you know, native uh, amphibians, which I've got, you know, common frogs and um, palmate newts and common newts in. Uh, so check out my other videos to see that. Uh, and there is another video on how I built that pond as well. Um, so check that out. Uh, hit subscribe to see anything that I post up in the future. And thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video.